including with uh, we barbecue with the prime minister coming up together with a dialogue and also uh -huh. there is something that is going on uh -huh. they do they want our soldiers uh -huh. to arrest barbecue or kill our soldiers uh -huh. can you explain to us the reason why they want that to be done and you tell them the a function of our kenya police uh -huh. is it to kill someone or uh -huh. to do what tell them something well um before before we even get to that yeah. just uh, i think it is on tuesday yeah our forces, 200 more, yeah. went to Haiti. So right now we have a total of 600 yeah. of the Kenyan forces in Haiti. That means that the forces now have grown and only 400 are remaining here in Kenya because we were, or we promised, Kenya promised 1,000 forces yeah. over the 2,500 that are going to be contributed by also other countries. So, well, barbecue has made Haiti suffer. Mm -hmm. yeah? Barbecue has brought a lockdown in Haiti. People cannot uh, move freely people cannot live freely. And if a person is coming to infringe in your freedoms and rights, mm -hmm. then you really don't want that person to be to stay any longer because of the pain and the suffering that uh, the person has brought. So that is why you're finding that uh, many Haitians out there supported the move to have Kenyans uh, mm -hmm. in, the, in, 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 their, in their soil. And you can find um, even different medias which uh, engage the locals. You'll find that they're saying, the locals are saying that Kenyans are welcomed as long as they, of, of course, as long as they uh, go with the laws, as how the laws are supposed to, to go, and uh, not uh, arrest people without uh, having cause or uh, causing harm to, to the civilians. So it is, a, it is a moment where the country is seeing hope. A country that has lost around 500,000 people to go to outside countries because there was unrest in their country. A country that has lost people to kidnappings and death and, and, and threats mm. is now seeing a hope, something coming uh, that will give them a future. So mm. Kenyan forces are there to, first of all, restore order in Haiti. Mm. They are not there to, to keep peace. True. This is not a, so uh, we can say a peacekeeping mission. It is not a peacekeeping mission. Mm. Uh, because they are not going to stand in the way and then allow people to negotiate. That is not the case. These MSS forces are going there to make sure mm. that uh, Haiti returns back to its normalcy. Mm. That means they are going to engage the, 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 the gangs and they are going to side. They are already siding with the government mm -hmm. that is given. So they are not there to say that uh, the government is on one side and the gangs are on one side. No, they are going to help the government to counter these, these uh, insurgencies or these gangs. So that is the role of the Kenyan forces. In Do Haiti. you think Barbecue will give up on this fight? Do you think he's going to give up and say that, ah, I've decided to go to prison, I've decided to be arrested? Do you think it may reach a time that Barbecue may decide to give in yeah. to the Prime Minister's demand? It is not certain because uh, Barbecue has, uh, we can say he has come from, a very, f from very far. And uh, if you look at his history, uh, it, it goes way back, uh, mm -hmm. even during the presidency of Juvenal Moise. Mm -hmm. So this means that Babacu has, he has that goal that he wants to achieve. Mm -hmm. Recently it became political and he also wanted also to be uh, one of the presidents in Haiti uh, in history. So Babacu has a goal to achieve and uh, I don't think he's going to just lay down his arms. He's going to put up a fight and uh, I know all the forces, the Kenyan forces, the MSS forces, uh, are expecting, together with the Haitian police, they are expecting a fight from from Babacu. Mm -hmm. Even in re in uh, recapturing that hospital, they engage in a fight. So, mm -hmm. Babacu is not there to to just allow people to come and then take their arms and say I surrender because of course mm -hmm. Babacu will go to jail. Uh, if anything, he will be captured and he will go to jail and possibly he will never be released because. He has committed crimes against humanity, mm. killed a lot of people. So uh, come what, um, what may, he will put up a fight and I know they are expecting a fight. As you can see that recently Barbecue decided to recruit children. What mm -hmm. can you say about that? Why is he coming and recruiting children in his gang? It, it is unfortunate. It Very is unfortunate. Sad. And before you even come to that, I have to make sure that uh, I give also people the context of the Kenyan forces that yeah. are going there. These are elite squads. Yeah. You know, when people were saying that Kenyan forces are going to Haiti, many thought that there were these regular uh, yeah. police officers that we see around here. These are elite forces. These are Reke squad, uh, SOG. We have the Border Patrol unit. These are elite squads that mm. are at the rank 
almost of the military forces here in Kenya, True. you know, advanced military forces. So when when we are speaking about the Kenya police in Haiti, we are not just speaking about anyone. We are speaking about the best of the very best here in Kenya mm. that have trained for quite some time and even gone to urban warfare. They understand urban warfare very well. True. It's only that uh, they've not actually trained in the Haitian landscape and they have the Haitian police to tell them where to go and where not to go. That being said, it is unfortunate that uh, barbecue is using uh, children right. in his course because uh, you know a warlord is a warlord if you're presenting your your own views regardless of what you're doing an armed struggle or a peaceful struggle at least there are some there's some lines that you're not supposed to cross right. if you go to crossing those lines and using children uh, to take up arms against uh, the government or other people then i think that is beyond that person is beyond saving. Sure. Yeah, these are the tactics that are being used by terrorists uh, in, the, in, in the Middle East, terrorists in, in some parts of Africa. So there is a need for us to have that genuine conversation because we understand people will always look at this thing twofold. Mm -hmm. Some people will support barbecue mm -hmm. because of the disgruntlement that uh, people have against the West, yeah. against uh, people who have had power in Haiti. And that is okay yeah. because we have freedom of speech. Sure. But then again, we have also to consider that and, and look at the, the real thing that is happening. If you're using children to, to fight uh, the, this, uh, the government, then what generation are we expecting to yeah. rule over? And in just Haiti? want to negotiate with the government. Exactly. Yeah. So it is very unfortunate that we are going to that extent, but it is something that many uh, gang leaders and criminals use. Mm. They use the innocence of children because uh, as someone who is underage, there is a reason why we say someone is underage, because they are not mature enough. Sure. They cannot think uh, beyond what they are seeing right now. Uh, a person who is grown up will know that if I take this arm and I start engaging these people, I might lose my life sure. and people who are depending on me will, will have lost. Mm. But a child will not uh, perceive all these things. They will not see beyond that. Even if you look at what is happening in, uh, in Mexico and other Latin American, Colombia, which are fighting uh, drug or drug warlords mm -hmm. that are fighting the government. They use children and that is a sad situation because when you're using uh, children, when you're using a child, that means that you are not respecting the laws of nature True. to allow uh, children to grow up, mature and make their own decision. That one will be taken to uh, akin to you are trying to uh, sabotage their future. You are also taking away their innocence mm. and uh, you are radicalizing these children to only follow you. Boni, tell yeah. them something. Hello guys, today we are looking also at Haiti, at yes. the new developments that have been happening in Haiti. Yes. yes, we are very proud of our Kenya police. They yeah, are doing are. an extraordinary job to and raising the flag of Kenya so high in mm -hmm. Haiti. People mm -hmm. were saying that our police are going to face a hard time there in Haiti. Mm -hmm. Our police are going to be killed. Our police, they don't know how to speak in French. They mm -hmm. don't know uh, the language of people in Haiti. Mm -hmm. Our police don't communicate so well. What can you say about our police? First of all, Jeff, mm -hmm. let me let me speak to our nationals in the yes. best language that they understand. Yeah. The police in Kenya, Watenda Pale Haiti, they will flop, yeah. they will come back like this, like this. people also in Haiti will say mm -hmm. the name barbecue is coming from uh, the fact that this Jimmy Cherizier uses brutal force to to try and uh, go over the descent of other people who are opposing him mm -hmm. uh, the, the, the method that he used to to kill people is to burn them wow. and he burns them inside the house you are locked inside the house mm. you get burned that is what he he did in uh, in Haiti, uh, where he killed 71 people. Boni. First, mm. this is a nation that has gone through a lot of trauma, as we have discussed here. Mm. I've not even mentioned the fact that uh, the US police officers in 1925 mm. went into Haiti, stormed the, the national vault, that is the, like the central bank, mm. took 500,000 500, US dollars. Wow. Yeah and went away with it. 
just like that, you know. And that time the dollar was very high, it's not compared to right now. Mm. So it, it is a country that has undergone a lot of trauma. And uh, governing has been a problem as well, mm. because you find that uh, a leader comes into office and then you have a lot of conflicts, mm. mismanagement of resources, people who are taking leadership are only thinking about themselves, they're not thinking about the people. So the people, when they try to revolt, because this is a nation that has been born from revolt, when they try to revolt, they're suppressed mm -hmm. by dictators like Duvalier, mm -hmm. and it causes a lot of frustrations. So that is why you find that uh, even the army was not, um, was not able to quell down this, this, mm -hmm. these issues, because you'll find that the army went through coups. The army mm. was conducting coups. Mm. Coup and counter coup, coup and counter coup. So mm. the army was sort of disbanded. Mm. I, I have information that they are around, around 1,500. But you can see this is a country that has undergone a lot mm. uh, from France and the US and the countries that uh, have aligned against it. Right. Sort of the world was just uh, isolating this country for nothing. Mm. So that is why you find that there is a, there's a lot of uh, challenges in terms of coming up to govern um, because you'll find that these vested interests, yeah. I, I cannot confirm this, but people are saying that these vested interests have gone even to the governments of the day yeah. to try and influence these governments, yeah. not to work for the people and to work for, the, for these uh, other countries that are uh, having interest in this, yeah. in, this, uh, in this country. So that is why you find that it is a bit uh, a problem. Now, when you have a society that doesn't have uh, governance, a society that doesn't have authority, it becomes a very, very big challenge and facilitates or encourages gangs to prop up mm. because there cannot be a lacuna, a quizy corner, any uh, space left uh, without governance. Mm. Normally, human beings uh, de facto lazima kutakuwa na governance. Mm. So someone will take over. If the government will not, talk, will not take over, the church will. If the church won't take over, mm. then gangs will take over. Mm. And now you see that uh, Haiti now is... is uh, mad by gangs. Mm, uh, you have the G9, the major gangs at the G9, GPEP, mm. and the 400 Mawozo. Mm. If you come to the G9, the Delma 6, this is uh, the one that is being run by our guy, Barbecue. We won't talk so much about that. Yeah, we we yeah. talked about the other time. So the GPEP is mainly affiliated with the opposition, mm. as the G9 was affiliated with the government of the day when uh, President uh, Jovenel Moïse was mm. the president. The GPEP is mostly affiliated with uh, the people who were dissenting against uh, mm. the president, Juvenel Moïse, mm. the, the opposition then. So all the opposition would uh, seek the indulgence of the GPEP mm. to counter the G9. And then we have the 400 Mawozo, and this was just incorporating all uh, people who are uh, former police officers, mm. they will join that. Former uh, deportees, people who were deported from Haiti, will join the 400 Mawozo. Mainly not uh, in Port-au-Prince, but outside Port-au-Prince, mm -hmm. in, other, in other cities in, in Haiti. But the main two are the G9 and the GPEP. Then there are others, very many uh, gangs in Haiti, mm -hmm. in different parts of the country that are still controlling. Some are very, some are weak, we can say some are weak, mm -hmm. some are very strong. Yes. True. But this recent uprising in Haiti mm -hmm. is caused by, after the assassination of Juvenal Moïse, mm. who was the president of Haiti, the last president of Haiti. There, there has never been any other president. Mm. Now, Juvenal... Who, who assassinated Juvenal Moïse? Now, that is the, the contentious issue. Oh. Because one of the gangs, yeah. the opposition also had a gang. Mm. The government had uh, so the police. So it was just fighting, they were fighting against each other. Yes. Oh. Even Juvenal Moïse himself mm. could be implicated in this. Mm. Because he himself also had the police governing him, and also the gangs. Mm -hmm. And that is where now mm. Jimmy Cherizi, mm. a.k.a. Barbecue, mm. comes in the picture. Mm. Barbecue, when Juvenal Moïse mm. was the president, Barbecue was a police officer. Mm. Then uh, he turned to be a gang leader, but still supporting Juvenal Moïse. Mm. But now, after the assassination of Juvenal Moïse, the president, Barbecue came out mm. and said, you guys, you are disrupting the peace of Haiti. Mm. And uh, now the opposition gang and Babacu, the opposition is called GPEP. Babacu's uh, gang is called G9, mm. family uh, plus allies. So they came into a conflict. There are over 200 gangs in Haiti. Mm. 
Uh-huh. Yeah. Can you tell so, can you tell us something about this barbecue? Barbecue. Mm. Barbecue was a police officer and then turned to be a gang leader. Of course, now he's using he's using the knowledge that he had from the police service to lead this gang, as well as this name Barbecue. His original name or ID name is Jimmy Cherizier, mm. but uh, the name Barbecue has some disputes. One year in Asema, uh, the name came about from uh, his mother who used mm. to cook chicken uh, in the streets, and he, she used to to roast chicken, so people would name him barbecue mm. but as many analysts will say mm. and as people also in haiti will say mm-hmm. the name barbecue is coming from uh, the fact that this jimmy cherizier uses brutal force to to try and uh, go over the descent of mm-hmm. other people who are opposing him mm-hmm. uh, the, the the method that he used to to kill people is to burn them wow. and he burns them inside the house you are locked inside the house, mm. you get burned. That is what he, he did in, uh, in Haiti, mm. uh, where he killed 71 people by dismembering and also burning them. So that is why he is called mm. barbecue. Mm. Because you know, barbecue is, is a roasting meat. But now in this case, sad enough, mm. barbecue is being used uh, for this person mm. who uh, goes on to burn people. Mm. So that is why... Is called and w- when we are talking about this barbecue, yeah. do you think that our Kenya police are in danger right now in Haiti because it's a new <coughs> terrain? Do you think they are, they are, they are, are they safe there in Haiti? Because this barbecue, the way you have talked about it, mm. this is a trained soldier. Mm-hmm. This is someone that knows the terrain so well. Yes. Where did this guy even got the muscle to control the people in Haiti? How? The society, the social fabric of Haiti has broken. First of all, so there is no governing, there is no authority, there is nothing. It's just a lawless country because it doesn't have a military force. Uh, just like in Kenya, the other, the other week where the police were overpowered, we called in the military. You know, The military is the last defense. So Haiti doesn't have a military. It has not had a military for since 1999 or something. Yeah, because... The country was used to counter coups and coups from the military. So they said, to hell with the military. Mm. Let us do without the military. So they had only the police. Mm. And now these are the police who are now overpowered by these forces. Mm. I'm not saying that the police are very weak. They, they still control a, part, uh, a larger part of the Port-au-Prince. Mm. But uh, Barbecue and, uh, and the, the GPEP also control quite a big chunk of Port-au-Prince. Mm. So uh, if you're looking in a society where you don't have authority, there cannot be a vacuum. Someone has to fill that vacuum. And now that is why Jimmy Cherizier came in to try and fill that vacuum by coalescing a few gangs and being the gang leader, being the most feared person, try to take on resources and everything. So where, where do they get the money? Because if you're running a gang, True. you have to get money. They get money through extortion, through kidnapping. You kidnap mm-hmm. a person who is from a rich pa- family, mm-hmm. you... You, 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 you ask for money from their family, mm-hmm. they send you the money. There are a few uh, white people there, French people, who get kidnapped and then they ask for ransom money. and then they, they, release. they release the person. Yeah. You can even be kidnapped thrice. <laughs> <laughs> so this is how this guy so gets money. That is how they get money as well as um, a few, of course, they must be doing taxes mm-hmm. in the areas that they control. Uh, you, get, you give them something for protection and then... So that is how they get money to, to, to continue their business. And where do they get their arms? From the United States, but not legally, but through illegal means oh. as well. You know, you can trade in illegally through the, the porous borders and everything. So that is where they get their arms. Okay. Haiti has a lot of work to do. Mm. One, yes, there is the, the problem of armed gangs and everything. But once you solve that problem of armed gangs, you still have a society to build. Okay. And this is a society that, as I said, from the 60s and 50s, they are used to people having arms. So it is going to be a very different conversation because, one, you will still have to give jobs to these yeah. uh, jobless young people. If they don't have jobs, then they will result to gang, to gang, or to gang uh, behavior at the end of the day. So, yes, you need to get the arms out of the civilians. A lot of people there trying to get minerals from that uh, land. They had to 
get 1,600 Africans from Africa to come and start working in those lands. Yeah. So that was the Spanish. But after some time, now they ceded land, as I said, to the yeah. French. Yeah. And the French now took part of the land and uh, the big portion remained to Spanish. Yeah. That is why today you'll find uh, that uh, island has two nations, Haiti and the Dominican Republic. Mm -hmm. The Dominican Republic are, have the Spanish influence mm -hmm. and then Haiti has the French influence. Mm -hmm. That comes even till today. Mm -hmm. You'll find that Haiti speaks uh, French Creole and then you'll find the Dominican Republic as well, uh, very well aligned to, to Spain. And now uh, when the French took over, now the drama started. Mm. Uh, you know that part of land that they were given was very rich. By the way, Haiti is very rich. Mm. It has very, it had gold and oh. it had a very ripe uh, soil for mm. planting sugarcane. Mm. So they had all these minerals and everything, uh, agriculture, but they didn't have manpower because, as I said earlier, the, the locals who were living there were killed and uh, frustrated just by people coming in from different parts of the world to move in there. So the French had to bring in Africans to come and work as slaves, mm. you know. So it is even recorded that uh, a third of the transatlantic trade went to Haiti. A third of the people who were traded, uh, sadly, human beings who were traded in the transatlantic trade went to Haiti. So Haiti took a lot of Africans from West Africa to go and, and live there. That is why Haiti today is predom predominantly African. Mm. After some time, they, the, the French ruled with uh, an iron fist in Haiti, uh, having slaves and taking a lot of minerals from uh, Haiti to France. But there was a French Revolution. Yeah, There was a French Revolution around uh, 1897, around there. There was a French Revolution that uh, made, caused the awakening of the, the, the French people. The people who wanted this revolution also had opined that there is a need for Africans to be recognized mm -hmm. as also a people and to be given free will to choose whatever they want to choose. Mm -hmm. So when, uh, after, in, in between this French revolution, there was also the Haiti revolution. They took advantage of that, Haitians took advantage of that also and started their own revolutions. Mm -hmm. After some time, they were, ma they were able to manage to fight the French and got independence. So that is how Haiti came to be born. In fact, this is, I think, this is 1804. Sorry, this was 19, 1790 something, the revolution, uh, 1791, all the way to 1800s. So Haiti got independence in 1804. That is when the, the nation Haiti came to be born. Uh, and that was the second independent nation in the Americans. Oh. Yes. Uh -huh. Haiti now is born. Yes. We have a nation called Haiti yeah. that speaks French, as you, as you are going to answer that question. Now, um, all these Western countries mm. are worried that yes. we have a country here that is African and can show the world that Africans can govern themselves. You know, that is something that... Uh, Western nations did, did not want to be heard anywhere. Mm -hmm. Because at that time, Britain uh, wanted also to colonize uh, part of Africa. They came later to colonize part of Africa. They had those interests as well. France had a lot of colonies around the world. Mm -hmm. uh, the US didn't want also this, you know, the US will align with the West because they are, they are partners or trading partners or allies. So they didn't want this conversation. At that time as well, U.S. was also participating in transatlantic trade, taking blacks to, to America and making them to work in farms and ETC as, as slaves. So they didn't want this conversation of uh, Africans governing themselves. So what did France do? They, France and, and the Allies, and Britain and Germany and, and the U.K. and the U.S. Uh, stopped working with Haiti, did not recognize Haiti as a nation. Therefore, Haiti was isolated. For a very long time, Haiti was isolated. And when, when you are isolated, you really cannot do anything. You cannot trade, you cannot mm -hmm. have diplomatic relations, you cannot do anything. Basically, you are condemning that nation to mm -hmm. poverty. But after some time, King Charles X of France came forth and said, you know what, 
um, France was uh, in Haiti. France was the colonizer. Yeah. Now France want to give, wants to give you freedom. But this freedom will come at a cost. You know, yeah. They gave Haiti freedom, but they, they, get, they, they, they made a deal to have a huge sum of money as loans to Haiti. So that Haiti will be paying France for the freedom that it has, it has mm -hmm. gotten. And you know that is very unfair, by the yeah, way. True. Because this country has fought with blood. Mm. Yeah? Independent. Jean-Jacques was the, was, the, was the emperor, the first emperor of, of, of uh, Haiti who liberated the country. Jean-Jacques. Jean-Jacques, yes. Mm. He fought with... It, it is, by the way, it is recorded as the most bloodiest or brutal um, war mm. in modern history. Because these people fought for their nation. But then again, they fought for their nation, but every other nation that is supposed now to work with them mm. is against them, one. And two, now France is coming to say that you have to pay loans to us from nowhere, yeah. you know. <coughs> so Haiti, over a period of time, Haiti started paying loans mm. to France, you know, condemning that country to poverty. And that is why... Uh, as, as proud as we are as Africans, that was our first ever African nation mm. to be able to govern itself, but it was condemned to poverty by these Western forces. So you mean Haiti is an African nation? It, it is. It is. We can call it an African. <laughs> it is not in the African continent, uh, but it is an African nation. It is a yeah, black because nation. There, because uh, I know that some people are asking themselves that this country is not in Africa. Not so in many Africa. people over there are in Haiti are blacks. They are blacks. So people are asking themselves. It is because happened. of the transatlantic trade oh. that <clears throat> made a lot of uh, African people of African descent to be there. Mm. Barbecue helping people in the society. Mm -hmm. How was this gay helping people while in this, at some point mm -hmm. kidnapping people? <coughs> it, it, is a, it is an issue that is a, a bone of contention. Mm. One, um, there is no leader who will gain popularity mm. without being seen as a savior. Mm. We say that one man's uh, savior mm. is another man's, or one man's terror, terrorist mm. is another man's savior. These people who, uh, let us leave Haiti out of this, and yes. I, I'm not I'm implicating in any way that these, yeah. they are terrorists. But when you come to the aspect of terrorism, we are here in Kenya and we know terrorism very well. Yeah, true. Because our neighbor here has a problem with uh, some, some, lead, some people who are called Al-Shabaab. Mm. When you go to these villages that are controlled by Al-Shabaab, they'll tell you Al-Shabaab, they are our heroes. Mm. You know? So... Even when you go to, what is this country, Colombia, mm. is it Colombia where uh, this Nako, Nako King mm. came from, this uh, uh, came from, mm. uh, Pablo Escobar, Pablo. yeah, mm. he was, he was yeah, seen as a savior, yeah, yeah? In, in Medellin, mm. or Medellin, the place where he came from, if you go there they still have his portrait mm. as a savior, but what do we know about Pablo Escobar, mm. yeah. killed a lot of people, True killed a lot of, a lot of police uh, men and women, mm -hmm. uh, committed terrorist attacks mm -hmm. in his own country, yeah, and supported people uh, taking drugs. Mm -hmm. So when you go even to our neighbor here and you go to regions or villages that are controlled by Al-Shabaab, they'll tell you that the Al-Shabaab is a very good uh, mm -hmm. uh, gang, or not a gang, uh, a very good authority here mm -hmm. that brings us what we need. Mm -hmm. So when you start uh, also looking at how things are there in Haiti, you'll find that uh, the, the man himself, Babacu, mm. will try as much as possible to win the hearts mm. of uh, the people that he is governing or the people in his territory so that they cannot revolt also against him. Mm. You have to be good to the people. So as much as you have cordoned off that territory from receiving aid or from receiving supplies because we know that they are also taking over uh, petrol or oil supplies and ETC mm -hmm. to govern them themselves.